You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thank you for joining me for a super, super special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And our very special guest who's been on before, who we all know and love, Mr. Jacob Studenroth, owner of Wise Old Dog Wine Shop here in West Hartford. Thank you for being on the show again, Jim. Oh my Jim. gosh, what a pleasure. And Jim, you know, I want to say welcome back. We've missed you. You know, people have asked, where's Jim? Where's Jim? And I said, he's taken Boston by storm. It has been far too long, but I'm back. And, and uh, uh, you brought some great wine, wine and I, I know you've had some great wine up in Boston. I'm looking forward to hearing about some of those experiences. That's where this one came from tonight, so we'll give this a shot. So this episode is going to be called Patio Pounders, thanks to Mr. Jacob Studenroth's <laughs> suggestion. And hopefully we have some fantastic Patio Pounders tonight. Oh, I think we do. And uh, Jacob, I'm very excited. I, I know you brought uh, the interesting white that I've never had before. And let's jump right into it. Let's hear about it. So uh, the first thing I have to do is pour a little bit more because I... Yes, I, I drank what, what, what you guys didn't. That's perfectly so I'm fine. A little bit more for you as well. Um, this is coat dust, and without sort of ranking on many of its colleagues or competitive, you know, sort of wines from the region, I think uh, the wonderful thing that the winemaker here at Lafage did is he kind of deleted the um, the shortcoming or the drawback to a lot of these wines. So here we are, we're in southern France. Um, nice, wonderful, ripe fruit. Uh, this some is a the, blend, right? This is a blend, yep. Very and mild aroma, very mild. Very mild. And what happened here is this, you said before, a moment ago, like this is sort of um, an unusual blend. Uh, I was reading earlier today, I love the word eccentric. I thought that was kind of neat. I like that. Great, great word for this blend. So basically, just to contextualize this, um, Normally, what you'd have, just as when you have Rhone red blends or Roussillon red blends, with whites, you're going to have Grenache Blanc, you're going to have Roussan, and you're going to have Marsan. And that's, that's sort of a traditional thing. There are other grapes that sneak in here and there. But here, what the winemaker's done is he's deleted the Roussan. And what that essentially means is Roussan is what gives those sort of southern French whites that oxidative quality, that sort of yeastiness mm -hmm. it almost yep. it almost gives you the sensation when you open the bottle oh man this this bottle may be off you almost yes, have yeah. that i know feeling, exactly what you, you mean know what yeah I'm saying? yep right so and it's something that pairs really well with certain things like it's great with salmon it's great with butter poached lobster but it's not you know it wouldn't be appropriate for tonight right it's not something we're just going to like drink and chill with and i don't think it's something that might be a patio pounder exactly in the summer when you right have, uh, because they're going to the grill because Roussan is pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. So here, what he's done, is he, he's kept um, the, the lion's share of the grapes in here, it's, it's Grenache Blanc, but he's replaced it with un -oak Chardonnay, which is really cool because what happens is he hasn't taken all of the body out of the wine, but he's gotten rid of that yeasty oxidative quality, right. and I think it's made it more broadly appealing. And well, certainly at the store, we see that for and sure. And the Chardonnay is still a very hearty grape. Right. When you drink a Chardonnay, you get a lot of body. You get a lot of uh, buttery and oak, right. especially from California. Absolutely. Uh, it, so, I'm, you know, this, this has a lot of body to it. But not buttery. Not, not, not a buttery taste, no. no yep, there's no, um, this is not a wine that sees, um, just to back up, uh, what's interesting is, so we know now that the Chardonnay in this is what's keeping it um, lighter mm -hmm. than it would be otherwise. And, of course, people associate Chardonnay with, um, oaky, mm -hmm. buttery, you know, California wines, which are good, but not this. So ironically, Chardonnay is what actually keeps this fresh, which is mm -hmm. kind of an, it's kind of an irony. I almost wish they didn't put the Chardonnay on the label because 
some folks, you know, you're yeah. drinking with your eyes first and you right. think, oh, geez, I don't, I really don't like Kendall Jackson. I don't like Bogle. <clears throat> I don't want to drink a Chardonnay. I don't want to drink a Chardonnay. Patio. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. you know, just trust us. And once we do sort of the one bottle goes home, it, it, it usually leads to more bottles. Well, that, and that great. was my expectation. When you brought this in tonight, before we even opened it, I saw Chardonnay on the label and I thought, oh, this is going to be a big, heavy wine. Right. And it's not as heavy as a traditional Chardonnay. No. Uh, not it's, at all. It's, it's not as light as a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio, but it's, uh, it's, it's got a little weight to it, but it's not, you know, it's not a big smack right. in the face kind of Precisely. wine. Precisely. And, and the Grenache Blanc, um, Grenache Blanc or Garnacha Blanca when we're in Spain, obviously, it's a great workhorse of a grape. Um, it, uh, it, in this case, um, it's, again, it's the majority of the wine. Uh, they tend to be fresh. They're pretty um, malleable, so the winemaker can kind of exert some influence and you know he's he's not or she's not sort of pigeonholed that's gone <laughs> delicious it's awesome no it really it, it's i definitely think uh you got a winner and i know i'm sure you carry this at your shop and we do. uh it's one of the wines that you know i would probably turn to i'm a big Sauvignon Blanc guy yep. in the summertime and uh this would be right there next to him right on yeah the, uh, and this is you know this is not a wine as i mentioned whether or not for the chardonnay issue but you know you sort of look at this and it's we were talking we were talking before the show started about it's okay to not know like everything about wine. I mean, we spend all day, every day studying it and we don't, we feel like we don't know anything. I mean, it's mm -hmm. constantly a learning process. And in this case, I mean, yes, it has a pretty label and I think that that might help someone pick it up for the first time because it's really quite attractive and it looks like, oh, that would be nice on my deck. But this is not a wine that jumps off the shelf into people's hands because it's not something that they recognize or know. Yeah. Right, but once someone takes it home, they say, "Oh, that's really, really good. That's really fresh." It's it's easy drinking, and it's just something I wouldn't even have to have food paired with. You right. can just sit down and have the wine on its own, even right. with just some uh, light appetizers or right. fruit right. on a deck, even before dinner yeah. or anything else, would be great. So I, I, I definitely a winner there, Jacob. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm also really excited. And I know Jimmy brought the next rosé in because the shape of the bottle is so sexy. And, uh, you know, bottles do sell it's wine. Great curves. They do. No, they great do. Curves. And yeah. uh, I think the last show I did last month, I had the uh, Chateau Farage on, which is a very similar bottle, very similar light pink salmonish color. And uh, I caressed the bottle on TV because I was very excited <laughs> by it. Now, I'm not going so to caress your bottle, Jim, because that's your baby. <laughs> so I'm going to let you talk about this one before we get into it. So I'm done. Do I need to caress it? I, I, I would actually lift it up and show people the curves. But uh, anyways, yeah, tell us a little about this one. Well, this is one I found in Boston just a couple of weeks ago. This is from Savin Hill Specialties in Boston. Um, I'm sure you can get it here in Connecticut. But again, it was the bottle that attracted me initially, and mm -hmm. then uh, they were kind enough to open it and let me have a taste in the store. And my wife and I fell in love with it instantly. So we've been drinking quite a lot of it since then. It's got a great floral bouquet. Another mild bouquet, though. Nothing yeah. that punches you. And the first time I had it, it started off a little sweet, and then kind of had a sour finish, which I found intriguing. And I also enjoy this color rosé. Um, there's obviously different hues of rosé, but I love this lighter pink one. Yep. It's something very sexy about that. Let me see if my mouth agrees. Excuse me for one moment, folks. It's, it's interesting you guys are mentioning the packaging, whether it's the bottle. Um, I'll tell you just to backtrack to the, you know, the Lafage. So they changed the design of this this year um, to include that floral, de you know, that sort of floral design on the front because Everyone's response to this was, oh, it's so fresh, it's so fresh, it's so fresh. And the old label was just not fresh. It just mm -hmm. didn't reflect that. Yep. And in the, so, so the winemaker is telling you something here. This is, not, this is not a marketing team. I mean, he really decided that. With your Provençal, not that every Provençal rosé finds its way into a sort of curvaceous, kind of sexy, cute bottle, but for sure, if you weren't allowed to see the labels of these, you guys know wine, and if you're walking by quickly, and I, and I sort of said to you, okay, so which is the one that's Provençal? Just take a flyer, you know, you're gonna go here, because it's traditional. And there are a lot of bottles that are shaped that way, not exactly the same glass, but, and I think that that's, I think that that's nice. And I think that while, yes, it certainly helps sell the wine because it's like, ooh, that's, that's sexy. That's great. I want, I want that on my table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's also, it's an indication of kind of traditional winemaking. And this is, I mean, this, to, to, to paraphrase my friend Paul, who's a dear friend and mentor of mine, it's like smelling this and tasting this, if I can't tell you in a blind taste test that this is Provençal Rosé, then I really shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Like this is, that's textbook, yummy, mm -hmm. light salmon pink, yeah. great mm -hmm. dried strawberries, 
nice and dry on the palate. I love the acidity. You know, it's not trying to, it's not racy, which we'll get no. to in a minute, yeah. right? <laughs> and so I just, I think it's great. I mean, it's really, it's, but it's classic. Yeah, it's and not overpowering at all, but no. And I can't overemphasize just how refreshing and enjoyable our first two wines are here tonight. Um, like I said, you're going to be watching the show, I guess, in, in June. And uh, both of these would be great on the deck, yeah. patio, uh, cooking out, grill. Um, I think the temperature is still pretty good. Obviously, they've been sitting out. I have a little contraption that maybe we'll get to later I'll talk about, but the temperature is still good. You're not losing any character at all. Yeah, yeah we, and we say at the, to be perfectly um, sort of feminist and sexist for a moment, we say at the store all the time that the rosé is the perfect man's white wine because if you leave it out and it warms up a little, it still tastes good. A good and, one, and, and, that's right. And my wife tells me constantly, it's like, you got to put the bottle back in the fridge. I'm like, ah, oh, you know. It's like I get carried away. We have guests, whatever it is. So we love this because something like this, it, we chill it icy cold, put on the table, and we frankly don't. If we don't have something like that, we're just going to we're just gonna roll it. It's going to warm up, and it's still good. Did you, so you bought this after tasting it right away. Right. You liked it that yeah. much. And actually, I should have asked Jacob, and I'll ask you, um, Jim. What price range are we talking about for our first? That's year? gonna you're gonna find that in about uh, fifteen to twenty dollars. Yeah, and this is um, this is well under fifteen. So that's uh, that's great yeah. price point. Great yeah, price really point. nice. Especially for people who are a little intimidated with wine, they don't really want to spend a lot right off the bat for something they're not familiar with. So uh, absolutely, and I think that you know the other thing to remember with um, you know, even with a classic Provencal rosé that is popular, but especially with something like the Cote d'Est. You know, the consumer, you, you can capitalize on the fact that it's not a popular category. You know, if I said to you, if I said to you, okay, here we're talking about a Napa Cabernet and it's a single vineyard wine and it's under $15, you know, you guys who are both taller than I would look over my head and roll your eyes because it'd be insane. Yeah. That's, that's not how it works. Because that's a hot category, it's expensive to make wine there, that's just the way it is, and the winemakers can get a lot of money for their bottles. This, it's like... No one has ever walked in the store and said, excuse me, do you have a Roussillon blend? Mm -hmm. But I kind of want to take out the Roussillon. I mean, that's not something that anyone yeah. says. So therefore, they, don't, they can't get a lot of money for that. It's, it's not something that's all that quote unquote popular, even though, of course, we sell mountains of it because it's, it's just so yummy and it's inexpensive and it's kind of right, you know, for the deck. Well, I got to say, you have a great segue to something that people aren't familiar with or even ask about. I'm really, really looking forward to our next rosé because... It was the one we were supposed to have on last mm. month that Jacob couldn't make it, unfortunately. But I saved the bottle, and it's from Lebanon. And I actually did not know they made wine in Lebanon. And it turns out they've been making wine for a long time in Lebanon. They have. I mean, the thing to remember with wine, as you, as you learn about it and as you read about it, which, again, I admit to being a student, and we at the store are really cautious about even exuding any kind of confident, not expertise even, but just knowledge, just because there's so much to know. So every day, you know, we're presented with these wonderful things and we do some homework and we figure it out. The thing that remember about wine is it's a, re it's a truly global market. So yes, America is a power buyer for wine. The goal for a lot of um, markets is to get into America, of course, because it's, we love wine, you know, and we're willing to pay for it and that's great. However, just because we don't know, just because you don't walk into a, either, whether it's a big box store where they do things by country and it's the Lebanon section. Which or I've never seen in a big box. No, I never right. have. Right. <laughs> probably wouldn't exist. They probably wouldn't be able to fill it. Or it's even in my store where, where we're more sort of by, either by varietal or by type, just so you sort of explore a little bit more. When you go to the rosé section, I mean, most people, when they see a bottle like the Ixir, they're saying, sorry, does that, does that mean in Lebanon? Yeah. Like a, but I've met the winemaker, uh, the owner of this um, wonderful, wonderful vineyard. Really special things to confess. We own um, quite a bit of Ixir. None of it is upstairs available for sale right now. I'm cellaring it. So the only Ixir we're selling right now is the Rosé. They have a wonderful, very deep white that's analogous actually to, I was sort of dissing on Rhone whites a minute ago, it's sort of analogous to a more traditional Rhone white. That's something that can see some real aging potential. And then they also have a red that's stunning. It's, it's almost like Southern Rhone, like think shot nif to pop or, mm -hmm. or Vacaras. Yeah. It's really, it's herbal. It's got eucalyptus. It's really, it's really special. Well, the darker color, I think, uh, is going to be interesting to see yeah. how it pops up a little bit more. Yeah, so this, this, and to confess, this wine, you know, we talk about... Um, 
age ability, a lot of times, so Wednesday night we have our cellar school and it's a really nice sort of informal moment to just sit in the wine cellar where we tape that show that yep. time. Yep. And uh, do sort of wine school, but it's very informal. We often have a winemaker there to present or we have a supplier, which is really nice because um, my, my poor customer is going to night off from me talking. But, <laughs> um, but with, with, um, we talk a lot about the age ability, and I think that that obsession of topic comes from the fact that you're surrounded by wine that I'm clearly aging, because that's sort of the setup mm -hmm. of the table. Yep. And what I'll say is rosé usually it's about freshness, you know, and, and this being 2013, you bought the right vintage of that. Yeah. 2012, I feel like Provençal, unless it's from a truly exceptional producer and it's something different, you want to drink today's vintage. Right. This, by contrast, is um, a year old, and we bought it on purpose um, and held it. We bought it uh, at the end of the summer, and we didn't put it out until the spring. And the reason we did that is if you smell this, alone it's just jumping out of the glass it's probably our strongest aroma yeah. Wine. yeah it's big it's really big i mean of course something like a merlot might be bigger but relatively speaking i mean this is this is a huge wine i know it's just a rosé but in this sort of minutia here this is and i mean this is thick too it's very it's viscous so yep. yep there is a little thickness to this one compared to the first one which is not good or bad it's just it's a characteristic that I enjoy, actually, in this particular. Totally different. We and we talk a lot about. Um, I love that you said here. No need for food. I kind of agree with no need for food here. Um, we were treated to a wonderful spread at a friend's house on Sunday evening. He set out a, a roasted red pepper sort of puree dip with crackers. And we had rosé. We had a bunch of different rosés, and it was it was like per, so roasted red pepper. That's. Like, cheers to Duff. That was an amazing pairing. I, I didn't even think of it. But with this, this is um, mostly Syrah. The other uh, grape, Calodoc, no points off for not knowing what that is. It's indigenous. It doesn't really matter. But um, so it's very, very hot in this growing region. Um, we know that before we make wine, we have to grow it. And so when we're growing wine, you know, it's a the warmer the temperature, usually the riper the fruit, right? And the bigger the wine. It's just kind of a classic relationship. So this is just big. It's really it big. Is, I don't know what you're getting from that, but I get kind of power, you know, it's really... Oh, I don't think it's as... You might be uh, putting a little bit more substance into what I'm getting, but that's mm -hmm. your own personal opinion. Yeah. But it's certainly bigger than our first rosé, yep. no question about it. Um, but also, I would say that this probably would be something that would be paired with a grilled meat, definitely... Sure. I think it would be a little bit better with a heavier grilled meat, whether yeah. it be a steak or and, uh, ribs or something like that. And I love what we did because, of course, we're so funny. We didn't, even, we didn't even talk about what we were talking about. We first came in, the first thing you guys said, other than hello, was, all right, so what's the order? Yeah. And I think that that's so important. And I think that, you know, what, what folks do not necessarily um, grab onto is that the order of a wine is so huge. That's and true. In fact, you know, right now, if like the lights went out and I switched these two bottles and you tried this after that, you'd be like, it's good, but it's so darn it's, light. Yeah. It's just so light. It's and good. you'd be like obsessed with that. And it's like, I know, I know, it's, but it's still good. Yes, it's good, but it's so light. Well, now, a, you know, we're going to follow it with something that's bigger so it makes sense. Well, it's know? just, I know you guys, especially Jim, you, you did it many times. You used to go to the wine tastings all the time. And when you go to a wine tasting, the possession, why do I keep messing up that word tonight? The procession. Procession. procession of the wine yeah. is key when you're doing a wine tasting. And I, there's a wine tasting I go to in Boston now, and, and the guy doesn't really pay attention to the order that he puts the wines in. And, and I'll actually, you know, if the first time I went there, he, he served a white after a couple of reds, and it, it was completely buried. I got mm -hmm. nothing out of it. Which defeats the so, purpose. Exactly. Because if he's trying to sell the stuff, too, people are sort of getting an opinion of something that is kind of biased because right. of the order that they drank the wine. So I, I have to go in now and tell them, okay, I want that one first and then that one second. And... <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to come by the shop <laughs> because I actually need a lot of help on order, especially when doing tastings. <laughs> I need, okay, I'll take one, three, six, two, yeah. perfect. Well, the, uh, the red that we're going to be drinking tonight is something else I've never done on the show. 
Um, as you guys know, um, I love wine. I love buying wine. I buy from Jacob. I buy from all over the place. And occasionally I do join the wine clubs, which you might be familiar with, whether it be uh, Five Seasons, Wall Street Journal. You know, there's pros and cons to them. A lot of people, you know, sort of look down upon them. I look at it this way. It's wine. I'm going to try it just to see what I think of it and let somebody else pick it out and, and see what it is. So I brought a bottle that it's from a wine club. It's probably uh, their sort of premier level. There's all different levels for wine clubs. You can get two bottles uh, every month for 20 bucks. You can get a case for 160. Depends on what your varietals and what your tastes are. But the Merlot I brought in is one I've never had before. I just got it with a case of mixed uh, reds probably about three weeks ago. It's uh, from the Cloudcrest Winery. And they use an assortment of grapes from different vineyards in California. So if you ordered from a, a wine club, generally what you'll get is a little piece like this on each bottle of wine. It'll give you some tasting notes, what the grape composition is, so you have your own record of what it is. So in the future, if you want a, tip or, a, a type of variety like that, um, you can go and look for it. And I've never had this before. Um, they ranked it with 89 points, but this is their own testing. So, of course, there might be a little bias because they want you to buy it back from them if you enjoy it. So it's not Wine Spectator or Robert Parker. No, it's, it's, uh, it is not. Yeah. <laughs> but once again, it, a wine club is good for people who are just getting into wine only because you have an opportunity to have other people select your wine. And as Jacob said, when you go into a wine store, a lot of times you're afraid to try something on your yeah. own. Mm -hmm. So have it sent to you. You're paying for it. Guess what? You're going to drink it. Right. Well, it's so funny. We actually had... Um I had one of my dearest uh, friends and customers in today, and so we do, obviously we don't have like sort of various, all these different levels or anything, but we do uh, two levels of wine clubs at the shop, and we were joking before the show started about how I'm just like the absolute worst businessman who's ever lived, because I, all I care about is like, did you love the bottle? Like, was your wife's birthday amazing? Like, did you, you know, whatever. I don't, I, I'm like, I don't You're know. not saying sell, buy yeah, it, buy I, I it, just, buy I just, it. I just don't do a very good job of that, but. To be quite honest, a good example of that actually came up today. Um, my friend Bill was in, and we um, we deliver and available for pickup our wine club wines at uh, the 15th of the month. So today being the 15th, we're sort of like scrambling and getting everything ready and all the tasting notes and bagging everything up and arranging deliveries. And he said, so, oh, so what is, what is Jack working on? I said, oh, he's assembling wine club. He says, wine club? Why, why am I not part of the wine club? I said, Bill, listen to me. I see you on a regular basis, and you walk in with your wise old dog reusable little bag, <laughs> and you say, pick me six. And that's the way you buy wine. So yes, you have your favorites, and yes, your girlfriend has her favorites, but you just ask me to do it. So, so, that, so that is a wine club. You're yeah, already in. Say, yeah. And I said to him, so I said, listen, I would, be, I would be delighted to get you a membership card and sign you up, but... I don't think you need it because for you, you're already about the trust thing. And I think that that's, you know, I love that you said, so their tasting panel and their, whether bias or enthusiasm would be the other way to say that. And they chose this. You didn't choose it. That's right. And it just reminds me, you know, when you form relationships, like that's what wine's about. That's mm -hmm. really like, that's yeah. what the, that's the point. I mean, yes, it's fun. It's relaxing. It's a great way to end your day. It's probably more refreshing and more relaxing than a glass of chocolate milk. But at the end of the day, it's about the relationship. When you come into the store and you say to me, hey, listen, I love that rosé last time. And I'm like, oh, I, I'm so sorry we're out of it. You're like, no, that's fine. I don't want it. I want to, you know, I loved it. So what else do, what else do you have? That's right. Because you want to try new things yeah. and experiment. And so this is great because if your credit card's plugged in and you're scared to try things, I mean, what are you gonna throw it out? I mean, you can't, <laughs> you, have to, you have to drink it. So that's, I agree with you. It, it tees you up, whether it's our wine club or there are some very varsity ones available. I know um, Wall Street Journal's big. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And Food and Wine Magazine's big. There are plenty and out there. And once again, like I said, it's not for everybody. I know some people are a little still intimidated, but it is a good way to try wines that you might not buy on your own even mm -hmm. if you had a great guy like Jacob to help you. And, uh, you know, I'm just a wine nut, so I get, try to get wine from anywhere I can. And I haven't tasted this yet, so I'm going to. Yeah. My oh, preferred man. method of finding new wines is to actually go to wine tastings and, and establish a relationship with the store owner like yourself. And, yeah. you know, once you get to know my palate, you can start making recommendations for me. Yeah, and that's the thing. We always, I mean, we were, we were laughing just like, we literally, we closed up uh, a week ago Friday and we were just like in stitches because 
we always say at the end, especially if it's a new customer, hey, listen, like, Steve, I want, let me know. John, let me know. Like, what did you think? Did you love it? Like, at the end, like, call me or email me or let, next time you're in, let me know. The phone on Friday, for some reason, every single person we said that to called. Every single person. So the phone was like, I was like, why is old Doc? Like running around frantic. Why is old Doc? Jacob, dick, oh, this call it dash. Wow, this is awesome. Oh man, this Provence. I'm like, okay, good. Thank you so much. Okay, good. Uh, can I just, can I touch you tomorrow? Because it was like rush and it was crazy. But it was so fun and that's, and that's the key. And even if you don't like it, well, that's, us, that's what know? we're going to get into next because uh, I'm going to tell you what if you bought this through the wine club, if you want another bottle of this, they usually send two bottles of each varietal. So I have two of this. So I'm going to tell you what the price point is for this. And I'm curious to see how that would stack up against a classic Merlot. So if I wanted to say rebuy this or if you want to rebuy it if you're in the same wine club, it's between $17 and $19 a bottle. I think that's right. And that's right on. I don't know if, I mean. That's, that's, I was going to guess about 15, but. Because there's certainly, this is a, not a bad tasting Merlot no. at all, actually. No, it's great. I, I, I mean, I, for me, the strength of this, which is why I'm willing to, I think there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of wine out there. There's a lot of California Merlot for sale, and it ranges in price huge. You know, at the store, we're, we're kind of like, we're probably about like maybe eight to like $100 on Merlot. Mm -hmm. 110. So there's a wide range of when you say I want a bottle of California Merlot, that's a wide sure. that's a wide thing to say. That being said, I think this here, I think it's jumpy. I think it's juicy. I'm a little bit surprised at the price because when I heard it, just re with respect to the label, it's labeled California, which means they're allowed to source fruit from anywhere in that's the state. Actually, that's yeah. exactly what that is. That's, and that's sourced kinda, from a lot of different varietals and that's in California. Ki that's kind of interesting. I mean, so to me, I get a little hesitant. But then on, this, on the flip side, right, you have wines, Bordeaux-style buns or Merlot or whatever, that are 50 to 100 bucks that also say California. Yep. So it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean anything, but it, 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 I was worried. Like, at, at first when you said, oh, man, 17, 19, but then you're like, well, but there's tannin, there's really nice yeah. fruit. A little it's, bit of vanilla. Lovely. Yeah, I love it. In our oh, remaining like, minute or so that we have left in the show, I wanted to point out really quick that this little contraption from Wine Enthusiast, you can get online. Mm. It's a great portable chiller. It screws. You can put this in your freezer. That freezes. You put your bottle of bubbles or white in there. So this, this is the handle. This is the handle. That's cool. If you go to a lot of BYOB places like we all like to do or I like to do, it screws right back on, easy to carry. And uh, you have your instant chiller right on the table. You don't have to use the restaurant's chiller. And uh, I think it's a great little idea. Look for it online, and it, it's a great contraption. Jacob, I want to thank you for being on the show. Oh my tonight. gosh, thank you right. so much. As, as always, the time goes by so fast when you're on gym. As usual, the time goes by so fast you're back, and <laughs> we want to keep drinking, which you're going to do after the show. Yeah, don't worry. And about that. Uh, <laughs> Jim, thanks for being back. I look forward to being on the show again. I, Jacob, I want to do some more episodes. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh my gosh. And uh, guys, until next time, keep all of us in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.